Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got something really special for you. My friend Kiana has just recently reached a thousand subscribers on her YouTube channel and she's celebrating with a reverse hop. That means she's taken over my channel today and she is going to show you how she made this fantastic light up card. Look at all the Copic coloring she did and she used easy lights to make it a light up card. If you are unfamiliar with Kiana's channel, you definitely want to check her out. Kiana the Craft Therapist. I've got links below. She is a whiz when it comes to using the Cricut. She can show you all kinds of amazing tips. And she's also so good at Copic coloring. So you're definitely going to want to check her out. And I'm going to let her show you how she did this card. So take it over, Kiana. Well, hello, hello, all of my crafty friends. We have made it to week five. This is week five of my reverse hop, celebrating my 1,000 subscriber. I thank you guys so much for coming along. Today, we're going to use Sweet and Sassy. I have four images from Sweet and Sassy that I have been dying to use. And so I decided that today we're going to make a slim line and I am going to feature all of these lovely ladies. I have a stencil also from Sweet and Sassy that we're going to be using today with our slim line card. And I have already used my Cricut to cut out all of my card panels and my mats that that I will be using. I did decide to cut out the OMG instead of using this one in the stamp set just because of the the dimension and the vinyl I wanted to use. And then I'm going to pull in a star from one of my Hero Art sets. I just need that little star. And then we're going to be using some Distress Oxides to do a blended background. So we're going to start out with our Distress Oxides in uh, Peacock Feathers and Salty Ocean. And I'm going to be doing some ink blending in three sections of the slim line to provide us with three different areas. And I did not even notice initially, but I think I used the Sweet and Sassy colors actually to make my background, which is fine. It just was kind of funny to me that I didn't notice that that was what I was doing. Here is our pink combination that I'm going to put in the center. And then I'm going to end with using that blue combination again. And that is going to create our, uh, kind of dimension in the background. I felt like it made a backdrop for the three ladies that I'm going to use on the front of the card. So this is what our background looks like. This is our initial panel for our card. Once I get done with that, I'm going to set it aside and allow it to dry. And I'm going to bring in my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I'm going to bring in three of the ladies and I'm going to stamp them out on my Mina Solar White Classic Crest 80 pound cardstock. This is the cardstock that I use when I am doing Copic coloring. I'm going to use my Memento because it gives me a nice, crisp, dark black outline for my images, which I absolutely love. Once we get those images stamped out very crisply, crisply the way that I want them to be, we are going to change over to our other camera and we're going to be begin doing a lot of coloring. Now, I really enjoyed these images because they give us an opportunity to do some hair and some skin, which I personally like to try to work on a lot to perfect. So what I'm doing is I'm going in with my E51. I'm only using a three color blend in this, and I am going to start out with my lightest color, and I'm doing what we call color mapping. I am outlining this to get an idea of where I want my darkest colors to be. Now, one of the things that I do when I'm working with uh, skin tones is I go lightest, mid-tone, darkest, and then I come back down. That just helps me to ensure that I get a very good blend. So like here, I'm going in with my E11. I am not pulling out the lines at all. I'm going directly over the places that I put down the E51. And this is going to help me build up my shadow color Coming into our last color, which will be that E33, which is going to be our darkest color. And I'm going to go directly over these two colors 
and then I will come back down with my colors and start to blend out. So here is the E33. I'm going right again over the top of the colors that we've already put down, just defining the areas that I am using to, to bring out my shadows of my image. And then we can start working our way back out to our highlight color. This is the way that I do it. I know a lot of people just map out their shadow colors and go straight in with their darkest colors. I do not claim to be an expert with Copics. This is just what works for me. I enjoy kind of blending my colors out. I get more of a seamless blend when I work my way up and then work my way back down. So that is just my thing. You can do whatever is most comfortable for you. Now, when I bring in my E11, you can see that now I'm starting to pull out the color that I put down initially and coming in so that we can prepare for our highlight areas. There are times, I've said multiple times, if you followed me, if you've ever watched any of my coloring videos, I am very conservative on my first go around and then I come back in and I'm a little bit more liberal with my colors the second time. So that just gives me an opportunity to ensure sometimes I have to see the color in order to really get a feel of where I want that color to be. So sometimes I'll go in and just get a little bit of color down and then I know that I can then go back in and darken those things up if I need to. And so you'll see on my first go round, most of the times I have a very large highlight area. I don't typically leave it that way. The majority of the time I will go back a second time and put in some darker areas just to make sure that there is enough variation in the image to show shadows and highlights. So that is what I'm going to do um, with this image. You see that I'm going to go back in a second time and this time a lot more liberal with where I have those darkest colors at and that will help me to decrease the size of my highlights just because I never want to put down too much dark color and then not have the ability to lighten it up. I can add color Eh, you can't really subtract color. I mean, you have a colorless blender, but it just kind of moves the color out. And I don't typically love using that. So I just do the more conservative route. Does it take longer to color? Yes, it does. Do I enjoy coloring? Yes, I do. So that doesn't typically bother me. I will probably say I colored these images over about an hour and a half. That doesn't typically bother me because usually in the evenings is my crafting time and this is what I enjoy doing anyway. So it doesn't end up feeling like it's a chore. I love seeing how these images come to life when I am coloring and practicing my Copic markers. So we're going to finish up her skin tone. And one of the things that I really enjoyed about this particular card that I am doing is that it gave me an opportunity to work on some different skin tones and different hair tones. So you will see that there is a variation of color in my skin and hair combinations that I use. With the skin combinations, I decided to go with the um, Sandy All Knots, um Human Rainbow, that's what it's called. It's called the Sandy Allnox Human Rainbow, and I believe that it's a free PDF, and it just kind of gives you some ideas for color combinations if you're want to do, wanting to do variations of skin tones. Um, and I typically will add another color in because those are three color blends, and I typically work in four color blends. This time I chose to go ahead with the three color blends simply because um, these images while they are nice size, they aren't like full size like my Prima Princesses and things like that. So I didn't want to give myself too much to have to think about when trying to add in uh, four color blends. But there are times when you could use four and five color blends for your skin and hair tones and it comes out beautifully. But I think that this came out very nice as well. So we're going to do a little bit of a darker skin tone with this uh, particular young lady and we will then continue to work our way down. Again, I'm doing the exact same thing where her hair is over her face. Because she's facing in a particular direction, I was attempting to ensure that that part of her face uh, casted a shadow and the opposite side of her face was where the highlight area was. 
I'm trying to become a little more conscious of light source as I feel like I have worked very hard to get my blending to a good place. So now I'm starting to really take stock and pay attention to where my light sources would be. That's going to be another journey that I always tell my followers they can come with me on because we all have to learn. And so I don't ever want to be one of those people who hold a particular um, medium away from you guys until I have gotten to my comfort zone. I take you guys along the ride with me so that you can see that everything doesn't start out practically. Uh, perfect and we all have to practice and we all have to learn the biggest thing is getting out there and trying so guys I just wanted to tell you guys I hope that you guys have been coming along with me over the past five weeks this is the last stop on the hop next week I will be back on my channel and I will be creating a card and announcing our final winner so please make sure you check the description box get all the information. I am so excited. Thank you guys so much. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. This was absolutely amazing. Again, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Courtney, Cassie, Jamie, Amanda, and uh, Miranda for allowing me to crash their uh, YouTube channels and bring you guys these, these cards as well as the giveaways to celebrate the five weeks of my reverse hop celebrating my 1,000 subscribers. Now we have exceeded that and I am super, super excited. So I am sure that we will be doing another celebration here shortly. So as you can see, I'm going through with my second um, go around with my colors, just deepening up the colors that I brought in initially. This is what I call my liberal round. And as you can see, this is where I bring in more of the darkness and start to decrease my level of highlights. So this is just easier for me. And like I said, I get a much smoother blend doing my Copic coloring this way. For me, Copic coloring was something that I feel like I started out a little bit wrong. I got all the colors. I did spectrums first and then I did Copics and um, then I decided to do classes <laughs> and I probably should have done the classes a little bit earlier. Um, it probably would have uh, stopped a lot of the frustrations that I had. I did all of my coloring classes through Kit and Clowder. Elise is amazing. She's very patient. She gives awesome tutorials. She's always available for you to email questions and to provide you with critiques. So if you have not heard of Kitten Clowder, I also have her information in my description box just because I feel as if she's a wealth of knowledge and she needs to be shared. Um, also, if you decide that you want to do coloring classes, she just requests that you let her know that you came by way of me and she will give you a five dollar off of your coloring class so hopefully that will help someone if you guys would like that was a huge benefit to me i still do my coloring classes because i don't feel as if i have uh perfected copic coloring probably never will but there are tons of things for me to learn and she always gives a variety of classes so it's always something fun each month now this one, I have chosen to do a darker um, skin tone for her and I noticed that the illustrator has drawn in more um, what I like to call guidelines to help. So I utilize those in an effort to try to make sure that I placed as much dimension in this image as possible. You guys see that my darkest color is not an earth tone in this one. It is actually a V marker. And I know that for some people that might really shock you and make you stop in your tracks, but it really does provide a lot of depth and dimension to your image when you are coloring um, darker skin tones. So it does not show up purple. You won't have a purple person. It's not like an avatar. 
it is um, just an ability to deepen up some of your earth tones because when you go over it, it does um, display as the brown skin tone. Just because you are doing what they call color glazing, you're putting another color over it so it does not show as that true color. I hope that I explained that well. Um, sometimes words are very hard. When I get on the mic, I lose my... Um, my chain of thought and my friend Courtney said it best, 50% of my vocabulary typically eludes me as I began to do a voiceover. Before the mic comes on, I have very fluent English. I promise you guys I can speak. However, when I get on the mic, it just seems like they all say, poof, we're gone. And I have to tell you guys to fill in the blank. So I am hopeful that you guys are okay with that and understand my dilemma. If you guys have not been a part of my channel before, if this is your first time seeing me, welcome. Hi, I'm Kiona. A little bit crazy, but I hope that you guys love me and enjoy me. Anyways, if you're liking what you're seeing, I have all of my information in the description box below. I love getting comments from you guys because I love chit-chatting with you in the comment section. So please feel free to leave me a question, a comment, you know, just chat back. I usually come back and I respond to all of my comments because that is really the highlight of my YouTube experience. Now I have moved on to my hair color and in this one I am not going in and building up color. I go straight darkest out to lightest because I want to have some variations. I want to show some of those flick marks that I am creating. I want to have more movement. So I'm not blending, blending, blending when I'm doing hair. Um, I prefer to do wavy hair more than anything because I feel as if I understand the structure of the hair better and where the highlights and the shadows would go when you are doing wavy hair. So, you know, I call it mountains and valleys, and you know that your valleys are always going to be darker than your mountains, and that helps me a ton when I'm doing hair like this image right here. So I do go straight darkest to lightest, and I only typically do one round when I am doing hair, just because I don't want to lose any of the flick marks and the variation that I create in the hair. Now, one of the things that I'm working on with hair is trying to leave a little bit of white space, because when you leave white space, often it shows um, shine in the hair, especially when you're working on black hair. But at this point, I struggle a lot with leaving white space, but I'm trying to work on it. Again, you guys can see that I am adding in a BV marker as the base for the hair of my darkest skin tone. Again, the hair is not going to be purple. It's not a purple blue. Um, my son just told me that avatars are blue, not purple. I hope you guys got what I was saying when I said that. You know, it's it. it I was making a synonymous. Uh, forgot my word. So you guys know what I'm saying. I was just trying to tell you guys that the person wasn't going to turn out looking like an avatar. But at any rate, um, <laughs> I'm going to now start using my lightest BV color. And I decided to give them all the same nail color and eyeshadow for the images. So I just used the lightest BB marker of my mar of my color um, combinations. And then I will go back over that with their lightest skin tone combination. And that is how I glaze over that color so it's not so stark for you. I'm going to work on doing their lipstick and doing the hair bow for this young lady. I love images that I'm able to do their makeup. I don't know why that is a thing for me, but it is super fun to bring out that extra um, just dimension, I guess. It, it, it brings out something extra within the card, I feel, when you are able to provide some makeup on your images. And the fact that these images are makeup themed, I think is very fun. Um, I did not make this card a makeup themed card, but I thought that it fit very well with what I was going for 
for this um, for these images and for the sentiment that I'm going to be using. I'm just adding a little bit of color to the tops of these brushes because I just felt like it made sense to have them looking the same colors as are on the images and their makeup. Once I get done with that, I gave them all black shirts um, just to kind of provide some cohesion in my images. And when I'm doing black, I still do shadowing and highlights. So the 100 marker is my darkest marker. And I believe the C7 is my lightest color for these shirt images. And just understanding that even when things are black and white they still have highlights and shadows that was something that i learned very early on because if i was new to coloring i probably would have just used the 100 marker to uh do the entire image and for someone like this image that has like pleats and things like that i've been trying to work on that as well so this was pretty fun for me um, to have an opportunity to work with it, but not on a large scale, just a little bit so that I did not become overwhelmed with getting all of the pleats and the folds in her clothing. She also kind of drops off in a, uh, like it just goes into nothing. So it just provided me the opportunity to end this shirt how I want it. Again, this image is drawn the same way. It just kind of drops off and there are lots of folds and pleats in her top, which I enjoyed. I thought it was very cute and um, pretty sassy. I just, I don't know. It's something about these images that really does scream sassy. I feel like the illustrator did an amazing job of giving these uh, images a lot of character. So we are going to be rounding out all of our coloring. This was a pretty color intensive card, but I absolutely love Copic markers and Copic coloring. I could watch it all day long. I use a BG marker to um, color in her glasses to kind of make it look as if they are glass. I put in some uh, white gel pen to show up the tattoos and some sparkle in each of the images. And I used my um, brother's skin and cut to cut each of these images out. So now that we have everything cut out, we're going to bring back in this slimline um card panel and I'm going to do what I call a dry fit just to kind of see where I'm going to want all of my pieces to be and we are going to then begin working on the fun element of this card. So I kind of seen where my sentiment is going to fit in regards to my ladies. I have the OMG at the top and that's totally awesome. I had my Cricut right at the bottom. Now I'm gonna bring in that star die and I'm going to put a little dot in the three areas that I want to cut out these stars because I am going to use the Easy Lights from Pear Blossom Press, which is Amanda's company. I have not used them before. This was my first time and they were very easy. So now that I have these cut out, I'm going to line this up against my panel and I'm going to put a mark on the inside of that panel to show where I want my lights to sit. I'm going to bring out one of the sets of easy lights and I'm going to put the battery in and then I press on it and our lights light up. Pretty simple. Even I could do it. It's very simple. So once I get that done, I'm going to bring in some tape and I'm going to start taping down the lights. And I am trying to make sure that I get the lights as close to the pencil marks that I made as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape them down. You can pretty much use any kind of tape that you want. I started out with this washi tape, but it really wasn't sticky enough. So then I brought in some scotch tape and I used that and it seemed to work much better. Once I got done with that, I took it and decided where I wanted my push button to be and I taped that part down as well. Now I'm going to do a fit with my panel over the top just to make sure that everything is showing through. And these little lights are pretty bright to say that they're so small. I'm going to bring a piece of vellum in because I'm going to put a piece of vellum over the back 
to cover the actual lights. Then I'm going to bring in some foam tape. I'm going to go all the way around the panel of this card with foam tape and I'm going to make it double thick and that will give me enough space that the push button is not constantly pushing but it also is close enough that when I do push on it, it will actually light up my card base. I wanna take all of that foam tape off and then I'm going to line up my card panel on my card mat and we have a light up feature. I absolutely thought this was so cool. I had never done a light up card before. This was my first time. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put my images down. I'm using art glitter glue. I usually get my glue from maymaymadeit.com. That is my glue of choice. Once I get all of them glued down, I'm going to glue down the shadow to my OMG. And then I wrote or I had my Cricut cut out OMG three times and I'm gonna stack those letters up on the shadow. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a piece of holographic foil that I also cut the OMG out of and I'm going to put those on the top just because I love the look of vinyl on my sentiments. So that is typically my go-to for creating my sentiments. I'm going to go ahead and get that part glued down and then we are going to work on gluing down our bottom sentiment as well. So our top says, OMG, that's totally awesome. This is going to be the front of our card. I am gonna add a push button here to give the recipient the information that they should push in order to light up their card. Now the inside of my card, I also had my Cricut write a sentiment and I'm trying to decide where I want to place this last image. I'm going to end up placing her directly in the center over the writing because using the Distress Oxides, it showed very well. And then I am going to bring that stencil back in just to bring in a pop of that blue onto the edges of the inside panel. So this is what that comes out looking like. I thought it was pretty cute. Once I get done with that, I'm going to mat it on this uh, True Brush cardstock as well, which is the same panel uh, color that I used for the outside of my card. Once I get that glued down, I'm going to put in my push button and I'm going to get that glued down and then this is what our card is going to look like. I am so in love with this uh, <laughs> coloring. I mean, not the coloring, these lights. I am super excited. So someone asked me before how I finish off uh, when I do foam tape. Now what I typically do is I cut eight inch strips of vinyl and I run it inside between the card panel and the card mat. And that typically gives a finished look to the um, foam tape. I know a lot of people don't like the look of foam tape. I personally don't mind if the foam tape is, is nice and straight, but I did want to show that to you guys as a way of finishing it when you are doing um, foam tape and mounting it. Now I bought in a black card base and I'm going to make it a top fold card. I'm going to go ahead and glue the top of my card down to my card base and then we're going to glue the inside of the card base down as well. So once we get that glued down, that is pretty much going to finish off our card for today. I love the way that this came out. I thought that it was really sweet and sassy. I'm going to bring in some Nouveau Drops to just embellish my card. I thought that this blue and pink color um, matched very, very well with the colors that I had chosen for the card. So once that is done, that is pretty well going to be it. Guys, make sure that you check the description box for all the information. I really, really hope to see you guys again soon. I'm going to use my Wink of Stella because that is usually the way that I end all of my card because I absolutely love the shimmer. 
I have had an amazing time. This has been a wonderful reverse hop. Thank you all for everyone that uh, hopped along with me for the last five weeks. I hope to see you next weekend on my channel. It will be Saturday again. Bye-bye.